when you install the software for the first time it will ask you the installation folders you can change the default folders on the first turn wizard you will need to specify your company details Here, by default, your system based currency setting will be displayed. You can change it if you want. On this tab, you will have to specify the email settings of your email account. It can be any of your email accounts which will be used to send email to the clients. And setting this up is totally optional. Now click on the register trial button. Before you start making invoices, it is recommended that you import all your items, your clients and your vendors into the software. You can directly You can put in all your items one by one from the items form. For each item, you can specify item code, item name, the price, unit of measurement, the rate of purchase, default supplier, all the details you can mention on this form. But the easiest option is to import all the items from an Excel sheet. If you have an Excel sheet with all the item details, you can use it for importing the data, which will save a lot of time. To import the items from an Excel sheet, click on the setup menu and open the import data form. On this form, you will have to select the Excel sheet for import. For this demo purpose, I will select one Excel sheet. This is the Excel sheet that I selected. And as you can see, the data from Excel sheet is displayed here. Now next step is to match each column from the Excel file with the system defined columns. Like here, the first one is item code. The second one is item name. This is item type. This will be price. This will be rate. This is just a sample data and the selection will depend on your Excel sheet. Before you select a warehouse name, you have to remember you must also put the initial quantity for the item. This initial quantity will be current stock in the system when you import the items. Rest of the details are optional and it is not mandatory to select all those. After that, we will click on the import data. Now, if, if we go back to items form, you can see that the items that we have, the items that we have selected from Excel sheet are imported in the software. Similarly, you can use the import data form to import your clients 
as well as your suppliers or vendors. So we have the master database ready, including our customers and items. Before you proceed with making invoices and purchase bills and further, it is necessary to cross check the document settings. The document numbers form defines how a number will be generated. For example, if you want to generate an invoice number which starts with INV and the counter length is 5 digits, then you can modify the settings from here. For tax invoice, we will specify the prefix and we will also specify the counter. After the setting is saved, if we cross check this on tax invoice form, you will see that the invoice number is generated using the prefix and number setting that we have given on the document numbers form. Similarly, you will have to do the settings for all the documents. Once the company and financial year data is set up, you are ready to start creating invoices. So here customer selection is mandatory since we need to see Next we have to select the items which we are going to sell For each item as you can see item details are fetched automatically from the item form Here we have to mention the quantity that we are selling and click on the save button if you want to mention payment terms or any other notes or if you want to mention the name of the salesperson you can mention on the invoice by default there is no salesperson information you can put in all the salesperson details from the basic inputs menu using the salesperson form so this form can be used to define salespersons Additionally, for each item, you can specify the discount percent. So this tax rate by default is it is now showing zero. The reason is on the item form, we have not mentioned any tax rate for this item. So we'll go back to item form and we'll modify the item so that we can specify the tax rate. Here on this field, we have to mention the tax rate. Now if I reselect the item, it will show me the tax rate properly split into CGST and SGST. Here I can also mention the discount. Same way discount can be specified on the item form and it will be pulled here automatically. It is asking me whether to print the invoice. So if I'm ready to print, I will click yes. Otherwise I will click no. The invoice is going to be saved anyhow. If you want to print it later, you can go to all record list, select the invoice and click print button. This is the invoice. This is a default GST invoice format. And this template or format can be completely customized using this template designer. 
here from the list we have to select the tax invoice template and on the right side you will see a template if you want to make any alterations which are uh, completely necessary for your business then you better get in touch with our support team they will help you with the modifications which are advanced in the template after modification you click on the save template button and click print and you will see the modified template likewise you can email the invoice to your clients the default email id of the client will come here automatically if it is mentioned in the customer form if it is not mentioned then you have to you can also type it here and this message template which is showing here by default as you have not typed anything here it is coming from the template setting from the tools menu you can go to email settings and on this tab email templates you can go to tax invoice and from here you can change your message template you can specify the message that you want to send to your clients the second important thing before you send the, before you can send the email is the email setting this setting unless you specify this setting you will not be able to send email or another option is to use your outlook software if you have a microsoft office and and specifically microsoft outlook is installed then you don't need to configure email setting here you can also email the receipt the same way you email invoices if you receive an advance payment from your client then you can go to payment receipt form and in the payment type section click on the advance and then put the received amount select the payment mode whether it is an online transfer or a check or a cash payment and click save so this payment is received as an advance this one is against an invoice we can use the invoice due form this is a kind of report where you can see due amounts for all the clients this top portion will display list of all the customers along with their due amount and if you click on any particular customer in the below list you will see all the invoices which are pending for payment this form is uh, really useful when you want to do a follow up with all your clients so if some client sends you a payment you click on the invoice and click receive payment button the dashboard that you see on the main form is automatically updated as and when you make entries for your purchase sales accounts everything